てゆくのはこの気持ち。Ah, the harem setting. Cute girls, slapstick comedy, and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of etchy. What more could anybody ask for? How about some plot? Well, there's plenty of plot in there. No, real plot. Well, it depends on your definition of plot. This is my review of On My Buddha, a series that was originally aired back in 2005 and recently released on Blu ray by Nozomi Entertainment. They sent me a review copy of the series so they can check it out, let you guys know about it. It is a 26 episode long series that's 12 episodes each season, plus their additional extra episode that has a little bit more nudity in it. And、uh, this is my review of it so that you guys know about it and see if it's something you guys want to check out. So let's jump into it. <laughs> I don't have much of a history with Anma Buddha. I know originally back when I first heard about the title, I immediately jumped in thinking, oh, this has got to be some kind of sequel to a m a Goddess. Well, turns out that's not really the case. The actual Japanese titles for this series is Amadai Yo, which is essentially Don't Act Spoiled. And the only reason that there is a title a m a Buddha is because when they decided to license and localize it in the West, they decided to give it as a kind of a parody playoff of the title. Oh my goddess. So, writer, nothing at all is connected between the two of them except for the fact that this title is a parody playoff of the other title, <laughs> which was a little bit disappointing to my younger self when I jumped into this series thinking that it was some kind of relation to Oh my goddess that I absolutely loved. But that aside, jumping into the series now, it is definitely a kind of a blast to the past. This is essentially your old school harem etchy show in its full entirety. Essentially, follows a guy named Iku who is working at a shrine or essentially was dropped off by his parents to work at the shrine. And he works there as a Buddhist monk. And he alongside him is six very beautiful women who are all priestesses of this particular shrine. And they're all basically keeping him in check, as you soon find out. <laughs> Because Iku has kind of an inherent power within him, he's able to kind of manifest this immense power, but he does not know how to control it. And the under unfortunate thing is that in order to unlock this power, often he gives into his worldly desires, or as you would call it, his perviness. <laughs> so, whether it be intentional, wanted to, or not wanting to, these girls end up showing themselves to him, and this unlocks his power, and he's able to exercise any kind of spirit that's before him and send them off into the afterlife. And that kind of becomes the formula of the episodes by episode basis. Episode opens up, girls are, everybody's kind of introduced. They will find that there's a spirit nearby they have to go see. They go see the spirit. It goes crazy. And then one of the girls shows themselves, and Iku unleashes his super monk powers, e x e r c i s e it, gets pervy, and they knock him out. And that's, again, basically the formula each episode. The only thing that kind of changes up the formula a little bit is the second season, which was oddly very different, different in how it feels. There w a s often some episodes that were trying to go for more drama beats. You had like Hinata's episode was pretty powerful in, in itself. Kind of this idea of her basically choosing if she wanted to be with the demon spirits that kind of was with her her entire life or with the new family that she kind of has. There was a little bit of look into Haruka's backstory and her relationship to her sister.、Um, but other than that, and, you, and then you had Yuko who was trying to kind of get more into her feminine side. <laughs> but nothing really kind of pushing things too hard. I think the big thing that does change the formula a lot with the second season is definitely Kazuki. Kazuki was this new girl that was added, and she's from a different group, but she is definitely after Iku's power. She wants to help him release and awaken. So that she can release the power that she has within her as well. And this turns into a thing that kind of throws the wrench into the, you know, otherwise not very,、uh, I guess, emotionally active group that we have. Because in the first season, nobody really has any kind of attachment to Iku. You do have Chitose having a very slight side to her that does like him, but does not want to admit that she likes him. Whereas in the second season, you do a lot, you have that extra wrench that's thrown in. 
that kind of forces Chitose to actually act when she wouldn't before. And it does kind of turn into a, a competition, a jealous, jealous competition between the two of them, almost a love triangle amongst this harem. Which is interesting enough because it technically doesn't have that sort of feeling of a harem in the idea that these girls really don't care about Iku. You do have Chitose who does care about Iku, but the rest of the girls don't really care. They're kind of just there. They're just kind of a family just keeping him in check, all kind of teasing him in their own right, but never really, you know, pursuing him in a relationship at all. So if you're looking for a more more of that type of harem, it's not really that. You do have the presence of the girls and the etchy happenings that happen, but nobody really does care about EQ, except for maybe Chitose. Now, there's technically three things I look for when I come into an etchy harem, because every now and then I do like to partake in them. They're usually very laid back, very much just have fun, enjoy what you're looking at, and kind of move on type of shows. One is if I really like the characters, because I think you really do like have to like the harem itself. You do. There's got to be at least one character that you just absolutely adore in the series. Two is that the, the show looks good. I mean, you can't have cute girls type harem etchy stuff unless they look good. And three, the comedy has to be solid. Now, I do think it excels in one of those departments, and that's in that the characters look really good. And Studio Dean did a good job of keeping the characters on model. The character designer did a good job on this series. The characters look good. It's when we get into those other two elements that we do kind of run into problems. The comedy, it kind of is very formulaic. It is very slapstick. It is very, let's go out there, etchy happens, beat up EQ. Let's go out there, etchy happens, beat up EQ. Now, I believe there was a lot more fun and laughs to be had in the second core of the series when we start getting into Kazuki being added into it. I thought she was absolutely hilarious whenever she was on scene. But outside of Kazuki, there really wasn't much substance there in the comedy itself. The last pillar being the characters themselves being likable, I think it does, it's in kind of the middle ground for that. The characters are a lot of fun to be around. They do have great personalities. I did like their cart archetypes. I think their character design, again, are very fantastic. So it kind of, it is a, it's a, it's a shaky ground this harem is kind of sitting on for me. But I think it does kind of sit itself very much so in the middle ground with everything. Having the comedy bring it down, but you having the art style and the characters themselves kind of trying to pull it back up. It is definitely one of those kind of middle ground, etchy harem shows that you're going to kind of come into knowing what you're expecting, hopefully. <laughs> And hopefully get some of that. But don't really expect much more than that. Don't expect a deep story. Don't expect, you know, too much funny moments unless you're just looking for just goofy, happenstance, etchy moments. That's really where the comedy kind of sits at. So that's my thoughts on Ama Buddha. Uh, definitely kind of a average harem etchy comedy show, but I te that's technically what you're getting into when you get into it. Uh, just be advised there is some nudity in it. But yeah, definitely a, a series that I, I think would have been in, uh, kind of helped by a third season because I, I do believe with the second season, Kazuki definitely spiced things up and they definitely felt like they were getting their strides with the overall comedy and everything else. And it did feel like they were getting better with the writing. It's just unfortunate that I, they decided to keep with two seasons, so that's what we get. Uh, but definitely uh, appreciate Nozomi Entertainment for sending me a review copy. Definitely if it's something that you guys enjoyed, go check it out. Uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know if it's something you guys have watched, if you enjoyed it or not. And uh, leave a like if you can. Subscribe if you haven't already. I hope you guys enjoy this review, and you all take care.